Laura? Hey, Dad. Sorry for crashing by without telling you my cell phone was dead. Is everything all right? Well, me and Chris had a fight, and I left him. Oh. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. You were right, of course. I need to think things through first. Did you see my note? Yes, I saw it. Okay. I'm sorry, Dad. You were right. I hope you don't mind me staying a few days. It's okay. Let's talk when I get home. Oh, I'll be going out with a friend tonight. I promise I won't wake you up. It's just that we haven't seen each other for a while, and I need someone to talk to. But we'll see each other tomorrow morning, probably. Yeah, sure. Great. Thanks, Dad. And I, I promise I won't be a nuisance. It's okay, Laura. Bye, Dad. Bye, Laura. Russell, we need the password. Like, right now? Yes, right now. Just give me five minutes. I might be onto something here. I'll call you right back. Do it, but fast. Those chimes are still hanging somewhere. No defense mechanisms to worry about. Do not rent. It used to be an innocent drawing. still remains. Wasn't Joanna looking at it? Shaman Poe. Amazing that it's still readable. So... She had a little sister. Martha, could she still be alive? Do you know anything about her parents, or a second child named Martha? Well, she was an only child, and I think the report said she didn't talk with her parents much. Also, they live overseas. How exactly are they important? Well, her past seems to have affected her last day somehow. Not directly, but there seems to be a connection. Russell, I need you to focus on who killed her. I know she must have been a very interesting person, with this and that childhood trauma that you're so eager to decipher. But we need to know her password, and who killed her. Concrete facts, Russell. I know, but finding the connections will lead to the facts. Just tell me if you find anything interesting regarding the family. And you tell me if you find anything interesting about her death. Okay. Goodbye, Tom. Bye, Russell.
Russell? About her password. Try. Three. Zero. Nine. Okay, good. We'll try this out and I'll call you back. Thanks, Russell. This is not a pipe. There's been a lot of shutdowns lately, and this building's electrical grid is just as old. So I got a backup. Hi, Evie. Any news on the picture scan? I can't find any patterns. I am limited by the hardware. Yeah. <laughs> Point taken. However, I was able to reconstruct the recurring dream I mentioned before. It seems to have started about 30 days before her death with strongly repeating patterns. It is available on the control panel. Good. Thanks. I am having trouble reconstructing time and perspective in this dream. How bad is it? I should be able to reconstruct all the events eventually, but their continuity and the different dream perspectives are impossible. Please expect a few errors in continuity and perspective. Eight percent of dream reconstructed. This dream reconstruction is really something special, Evie. As it is a dream, there are no filters for physical accuracy. Therefore... I know. It's easier to grasp the aesthetics of the imagination than the visual truth of memories. Precisely. 16% of dream reconstructed. Seems like a perspective error. It must match from somewhere. Evie, try to reconstruct perspective from this angle, at the current time of the dream. Twenty percent of dream reconstructed. Evie, please try to fix this perspective to the dream. Twenty-seven percent of dream reconstructed. Could that be Joanna and Martha? One hundred percent of dream reconstructed. So that's the end of the dream. Hopefully there's information about what caused it.
Is that rain? Another dog. As far as I know, Joanna didn't have a dog in her apartment. Someone else's, perhaps. A cabin, maybe. servers. This water must represent something. There's steam coming out of that pipe. I should get closer. Look at this. There are elements from her childhood. Could they be a deeper layer of the dream? Richard, can you find something on him, maybe? Searching. Richard, and these childhood elements, could they both be the catalyst for the dream? There are hundreds of Richards that could be connected to Joanna somehow. 29 of GoAT's current employees alone, and that is only from people that have their profiles public. <sighs> okay. Keep searching while I ask around. Looks like there's two layers behind the catalyst of the dream. One is buried below with her childhood, and then there's this Richard. I need to start over again. Hello? Mr. Russell, hi. My name is David. I'm calling on behalf of Marie Xu. Marie Xu? From GoAT? That's right, the CEO. Oh. Miss Xu would like to speak to you in person, Mr. Russell, at GoAT, today, if possible. Meet with me? Why? She'd probably like to tell you herself, sir. Oh. Uh, okay. I'll be there. Good. I will let Miss Shu know of your answer. Directions will be sent to your phone, including a pass to our guest parking lot. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. My car's like a unicorn in here. My lab's down there. Hello? Mr. Russell, this is Marie. A pleasure to speak to you. Oh, Miss Chu. The pleasure's all mine. I was notified of your arrival. I hope you had no trouble getting in. No. No. None at all. I'm very sorry for the short notice. And thank you for accepting our invitation. I'm happy to be here. Good. There's a lot to talk about. Listen, I'm on my way down. Please meet me on the middle bridge. Sure. So, how do I get there? Ah, please, take the orange wing. The elevator on the right. Jess, please help him to the bridge. Of course. Jess here will open the elevator and get you to the right floor. I'm coming down now. Meet you there. Okay, thanks. Okay. Bye. being repaired by a robot.
Mr. Russell, we finally meet. I appreciate you coming on such short notice. Miss Chu? You seem surprised. I... Sorry, I didn't know you... Uh... That I spoke without moving my lips? Yeah. Well, thanks to the amazing scientists in here, I can. And just by thinking. I'm playing with these voices, but they're all still a bit off. My voice was more nerdy. This one feels wiser. And more... Empowered somehow. I guess we need to have some of our AIs learn more types of people. It's interesting, though. After all this CEO business, most people in our field have seen me talking somewhere. I guess that means you are really immersed in your own research. I like that. I guess I am. Indeed. It took some time to reach you. You seem to be off the radar. If it weren't for the echoes of your research in the science community, I would have thought you were a ghost. At least by today's social network standards. Probably not a coincidence. It's too easy to get distracted these days. Indeed it is. I actually find a lot of that in here. The need to focus. Everybody is building something. They have a goal that is beyond traditional ambitions. It's a beautiful thing to be a part of, please. Follow me. You see, Mr. Russell, any good we're trying to do here is in danger. If you look through these windows, you'll see the substance of what the future will be made of. Automated farming. Clean energy development. Bold advancements in medicine. And here is our latest and most ambitious project. The first prototype of large-scale, AI-designed automated construction. Many local uses, but useful in other worlds as well. But these are delicate times. Every step we take is a war we must fight against ignorance, mediocrity, fear. We need all the help we can take. Building a good future is 25% human ingenuity. And the rest is all politics. You see, Mr. Russell, someone like you could help us in this fight, both on a political and scientific front. One second, Mr. Russell. Yes. Can't it wait a few minutes? Okay, hold the call. I'll be there. You'll have to forgive me, Mr. Russell. Even Sundays I have urgent calls. Please meet me on the executive level. I should be ready in a few minutes. Jonas at reception will send you the right way. Hi, please put your hand on the glass so we can give you clearance. You can find Miss Marie in her office. Joanna's office. Mr. Russell, I'm glad you made it up here. Please, close the door for me. I hope you had time to see a bit of what we're doing here. I wanted you to see it firsthand. There is so much prejudice out there regarding our mission. The best way to break it is to talk face to face, to be open about everything. There's no better PR than transparency, as long as it's managed well. 
I'm glad you understand it. We have to be as open as we can, while still remaining competitive. It's a delicate balance. The market isn't perfect, but we have to make the best of what we have. So yes, we have to manage what is known to the public. Some things need to mature first. I'm sure you of all people understand. And talking about this, let me be blunt. Has the TSB reached you already? I heard they're meddling with academics as well. Yes, they are. They move fast. I hope they aren't being as obtrusive with you as they are with us. If you do everything by the book, there's nothing to hide. I like your moral sense, Mr. Russell. But I'm afraid these people will disappoint you sooner than later. I do hope I am mistaken, of course. Mr. Russell, let me cut to the chase. I admire your research, and you face the same challenges we do, but on a different scale. We think a partnership would be very beneficial. A partnership? You mean a job? Here at GoAT? A job? No. A partnership. We're offering a very unique position here. A chance to direct your own projects. Very generous resources. And the power and freedom any smart scientist would ever want. Think of the other benefits. We're a tech company, with no connections to the pharmaceutical industry. I know that you already challenge their status quo and the effectiveness of their drugs. We can protect you from them, and make your research widely known. The benefits of working together are limitless. And in return? Two things. One is the share value of your expertise in the AI field. And the other is political support. A well-respected academic like you, that has always been outside of the corporate world. That is what the public needs to see. So, I would be a political asset and in exchange you would give me resources. That would be a cold way of viewing it. The warm way, which is how I'd like to think about it, is that together we can make the world a better place. Great minds like us need to unite and work together. And this is the place where you can achieve anything you set your mind to. Unless the TSB gets in the way. Politics is the other part of the equation. The biggest part, probably. When the time comes, Everything will come down to ideology. I want you to be on the right side. Unless you think the TSB will avoid the upcoming problems by simply putting a lifetime break on every possible development. To be honest, I think we can't take any further steps without proper regulation. Not the answer I expected, but I do respect that position the way I see it. Regulation is supposedly what keeps us safe from the dark side of technology. But regulation isn't the problem. The problem is who creates those laws, and why. Given the current state of affairs, I don't trust the government's intentions. The law reacts, and it's always late. I understand they want to get ahead. The stakes are too high. A single mistake could cost the world everything. But they don't seem to be in the prevention business. They just want control. And God knows what they could do with what we create. They have their own agenda. So yes, regulation could be good, on paper. But in my opinion, that is not what's going on here. Besides, politicians, philosophers, intellectuals, they all had their chance. And they left us a world so advanced on one hand, and almost dead on the other. So yes, I don't appreciate them breathing down my neck while we try to fix their mess. Anyway, Mr. Russell, I don't want to keep you here for too long. And of course, you don't have to answer now. But I should tell you that regardless of this small difference in opinion, I have no doubt that you joining us would be a wise decision. I appreciate the invitation, Miss Chu. But please give me a few days to think about it. Of course. There is no rush. We're more than happy to wait for someone like you. David will send you more details. And we should have dinner soon, to discuss everything further. And now, I'm afraid I have to get back to my work. Sadly, the world doesn't really stop getting warmer on Sundays. Thank you for coming, Mr. Russell. Feel free to stay as long as you want. And expect a call soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Russell.
I'm sorry. Do you know anyone in this building named Richard? Richard? There must be hundreds. Why? Nothing important, thanks. Oh, and Mr. Russell. Just in case, out of courtesy, we haven't signed NDAs or anything. But, given the current situation, I would appreciate it that this offer remain between us. At least for now. Of course. No worries. Good. Let's keep it secret. As if it was a password. Why did she ask for all these files? I have no idea. She did have access to everything, but it's very technical stuff. Completely out of her area. It's like super complex. Hard to read even for me, and I'm an engineer. And the notes on these paragraphs. Singularity? Unethical? Yeah, I think... Shh. Russell, you're a fucking genius, man. We got in. That's great. Did you find anything important? Yes. I can't speak right now, but stay tuned. Wanted to warn you, though. The attempts probably didn't go unnoticed. You know how it is. We can't compete with their infrastructure. You have to be very careful, Russell. There's a lot at stake here. Where are you right now? I have another task for you. I'm at GoAT's headquarters. GoAT? What the fuck are you doing there? I got invited to meet Marie Chu and met her at GoAT. Oh. Wow. I wish you could have told me that sooner, but that's great. Did she offer you anything? Asked you anything about the investigation? Not about the investigation, but she did offer me a job. Oh. Did you take it? I told her I'd think about it. Uh, well, if you get a second chance, take it. We can use this. She obviously knows you have sensitive information might mean that I could start another investigation against her. Another? Let's just say that that Munch, the previous CEO at GoAT, didn't go quietly into the night. Still, thanks for telling me all this, Russell. It's good that we're talking. As I was saying, there's another task for you. I need you to help me find something on the husband, Alex. He was with us at first, but now he's gone dark. Maybe he's afraid of something, or maybe he's just angry. In any case, if you give us some leverage on him, we might get him speaking. I have a feeling he knows more than he told us. I see. I'm sending you his address. Don't push him too much, though. And of course, keep us out of it. I understand. You're doing good. Keep at it. And call me if you need anything. Thanks. Bye. Hello? Hi. Are you Alex? Yeah. 
Who is it? I'm Frederick Russell. I'm trying to find out about the reasons behind Joanna's death. Russell? It, it almost sounds familiar, but it doesn't. Go away. <sighs> Hello? Hey, listen. I know what may have happened. She killed herself, all right? I saw the cameras. No one went in the building. There was somebody with her. Oh, come on. You people will do anything. It's impossible to get into that building unnoticed, okay? Last warning. Fuck off. I guess I'll have to stop bothering him for a while. Hi, Dad. Hi, Laura. Everything all right? Yes. You mind if I come in? I'm not at home, but of course you can come in anytime you want. Oh, but I'm right here. See? How... how did you get here? I know where you work, Dad. And Gregor at the entrance has known me for a while, remember? Oh, yeah, of course. So... why aren't you opening? Oh, uh, wait a sec. Thanks. This place. Your real home, Dad. I gotta say, it looks a bit better than the last time I saw it. Where's Carl? Oh, Carl stopped working here a few weeks ago. Really? That sucks. He was a real nice guy. Oh, I picked up this magazine in the entrance. It's for you. Thanks. This is not a pipe, but the painting of a pipe. Yep. So, Laura, anything I can help you with? Nothing, really. Just wanted to say hi. I had a feeling I won't see you much at home. Ah, well, you know how it is. Yeah. Work is work, right? It's just this case I'm working on. I promise I'll try to make more time when it's finished. Oh, can I help you with it? What is it about? Well, I'm under a contract. Telling you would mean getting you in trouble, so, for your sake... Oh. It's fine. I understand. I'm sorry. Wait, it's not about... Is that Johanna Cast? No. And you shouldn't look at my things. They're private. Alright. Sorry. I just want to help. She does look like her, though. She's all over the news. It's nothing like that, Laura. All right. I won't push it, I swear. Just offering to help. Well, if you want to help, there are these underground pictures that Evie hasn't been able to decipher yet. Where? Let me look. I know the city's underground. They're over on that table. All right, let's see. I... I think I know this place. Is anything wrong? No, no. I mean, not sure about the place, but... That show? A friend of mine is into this shit. What... shit? Well... Uh, don't worry. A friend of mine showed me a video on his phone that had a moment like this. Ah, I, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. My friend just likes weird stuff, but he's alright. And who is this friend? I don't think I'm telling you his name, Dad. I think I'm old enough to take care of myself. And about the picture? I'm not an expert, but there are only a few places that could host a show like this. Do you know their names? Hmm. Could be The Forge. It's an old nightclub outside the city, invitation only, or, um... Uh, the Wish Club, also. 
Weird stuff going on there. Oh, and you know what? Kinkhaven was on the news recently. It closed. It was known for its masks. I think someone died there or something. Or almost did. Interesting. Evie, can you search for those names? Yes. Give me a moment. Patterns found with new information. New memory available. Ha! <laughs> I told you I could help. Which was it? Kinkhaven. Well, if you need me, I'm just a phone call away, so... I don't want to get you into trouble, but I know you're resourceful. I understand, Dad. Still, I, I won't be very far. This was great, Dad. I'll leave you to your work. Tell me what you find later. Thanks, Laura. I will. Bye, Dad. Thanks to the name, I am able to connect many isolated chunks of data. It is a complex memory. Finishing reconstruction. Good. Please upload it as soon as it's ready. In the process, I have found direct connections with a previous teenager memory. Both are interlinked somehow. I'm also uploading it to the server. I didn't approve the memory upload, Evie. I am sorry. I understood that I should optimize all processes. I said that, but that doesn't mean I can be bypassed. I understand the stronger directive. I am sorry. Do you wish to delete the reconstruction? No, leave it. Just remember that I need to approve anything that is uploaded to the server. Please put the upload protocol over any other directive. We can't allow a new security episode. I understand. The lesson has updated the protocol hierarchy. Good. Faceless reconstruction. It's supposed to be the other way around. It's the same woman from Joanna's childhood place, but older. Her art teacher, perhaps. So I guess she knew Joanna very well. I wonder if she's still alive. In recess, I suppose. It reacts when I look at it. Maybe it represents a shy person. I really like the new patch, Evie. The unconscious is so much richer in information. familiar about these shapes. That defense mechanism, it doesn't want me in the classroom. And it kicked me back to the objective state. Could it be just children? Children that Joanna didn't like, probably. I wonder if there's some way to drive them off. Evie, the data should represent this woman and the bell above her.
teenage Joanna. Is she crying? What an interesting scene. The teacher reflects Joanna's mother. I wonder what she means in her subconscious. She's clearly important. This data doesn't seem to be regular raw data. Does it operate differently? It seems to be pure subjective data, belonging to all of her mind, not to a specific place. Much like a global feature of her mind. A global feature of her mind? A feature is a software term. In this case, if it has influence over all of the mind, we should call it a signifier. You said it doesn't belong to a specific place? Yes. It should influence the other memory that was found along with this one. The moments seem to be connected somehow. Okay. Let's see what it does. What are you doing here? Selected raw data doesn't have a connection to this memory. Her apartment again. Maybe it's just where the memory started. Joanna, who are you talking to? Can't hear what they're saying, but it looks like a fight. Finding what it's about could be useful to get Alex talking. The objective data is voxelized. It's the algorithm's most basic volume. I wonder if it's the same in the subjective state. The objective data is voxelized. It's the algorithm's most basic volume. I wonder if it's the same in the subjective state. 